I'm Tabitha and welcome to my channel, We the Foxen. So in honor of it snowing outside, I thought that I would do a winter themed book tag. The first question is, falling snow. The colors of winter are muted. Choose a book that has white, light blues, and grays on the cover. Um, so a perfect one for this would be The Abominable by Dan Simmons. It is literally just a man walking up a big snowy mountain. It's set in 1924, people going up Everest, people disappearing, possibly a Yeti. So awesome. Uh, question two, the crackling fires. Colder weather makes for the perfect time to sit by a crackling fire in the fireplace. What book is the best to curl up to next to a fire with? Um, this one was a little difficult because pretty much any book, right? Um, but I thought that maybe I would go with something a little bit lighter, shorter, um, and I couldn't decide which one. So I picked both um, Fierce Fairy Tales and Great Goddesses by Nikita Gill. And those are two books of poetry and drawings. They are just kind of imaginative retellings of classic stories and they might not all be super happy but you know it's beautiful and feels cozy to me even though it might not be the happiest. Uh, number three, Ice Storm. Because it's snowing out right now. Uh, winter storms can be brutal. What book do you have that takes the characters through a brutal season? So it's going to be a running theme. I recommend this book a lot. And I will talk about this book a lot. Cushiel's Dart by Jacqueline Carey. That one, uh, there is a part where the two protagonists, uh, the, the main character and her companion, they are escaping slavery in Scaldia, which is, uh, I guess, their version, the, this book's version of uh, like Scandinavia, Viking sort of area. And they're doing it in the middle of winter. So these are two soft city kids who are trying to escape their uh, scaldic masters in the middle of winter. They get into a snowstorm. It's terrible. Uh, okay, so number four, uh, winter wishes. Spending more time indoors allows for more time to dream and wish. What character is living a life that you dream about? So a lot of the books that I read, the characters have horrible things happen to them and nothing really, not, not everything works out. Um, there are characters I love, but a lot of things bad happen to them. Or I read a lot of uh, biographies and histories and it's just times that I usually wouldn't want to be alive, but still, I mean, I'm, I'm obsessed with Josephine Baker and she had an amazing life. So I'd love to be her. She just seemed like a fun time and a super great human being. I mean, she was a dancer, an actress, a singer. Um, she was a civil rights activist. She was a spy during World War II. She adopted like 12 kids. She was best friends with uh, Grace Kelly when she was Princess of Monaco like she just seemed like she had the best life N not the best life but she had a, an amazing life that would have been fun to experience I would think um, and fictionally I mean one character that actually has a feel-good life feel-good ending like a couple of hairy things happened throughout but that would be Rosemary Harper um, from The Long Way to A Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I mean, sure, she's escaping from her home planet because her dad did something stupid. Um, and she ends up on this ship, and the ship ends up going through some hairy situations, but, I mean, she finds a family. Like, she finds family on this ship, and she grows and she develops this relationship 
with another one of her crewmates and it just it seems beautiful so there's that um five hot cocoa there's nothing like a hot cup of cocoa during the winter as adults we often underestimate it who underestimates hot cocoa really uh what book do you think should be the next best thing so i don't i don't read a lot of new titles new releases i may get into it a little bit more in the new year but i i don't know what would be the next big thing one thing I'll tell you that is criminally underrated is the Entomologicon. Um, that one is by Mark Forsyth. And it's, it's funny. It, it, you learn a lot about words and the way that he's written it, and I also listened to it on audio. So he's, he's reading it to you and you can just tell how much fun he has with words and researching these words and where it all came from. And it, he just kind of rambles. So it's like, oh, the history of this. And by mentioning that, let's just go into this one and then into this one. And oh, by the way, did I mention? It's just, it's really fun. And you find out really interesting things like John Milton um, invented a lot of words that we use like demonize apparently wasn't a really a word until it was in Paradise Lost. Who knew? Uh, six, lip balm and lotion. Oh, that just sounds dirty. <laughs> soothing dry skin is part of winter for many. What book is full of soothing and comforting words? Again, I don't listen. I don't read a lot of feel good stuff. Um, I don't read a lot of helps, like self help stuff. I mean, mm, that one's tough. The Art of Asking um, by, by Amanda Palmer. That one, I mean, there's some pretty rough stuff in there, but ultimately it's about learning to ask for help um, and asking others to contribute to your art, to become part of a community. So that one ultimately ends up being like a comfy sort of read. So yeah, um, The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. Um, and seven, and the final question, peppermint mocha. What is your go-to winter food or drink for those reading marathons of winter? So I know a lot of people are gonna hate me and say no, but eggnog. I absolutely love eggnog. And you can fight me, I don't care. If you don't like it, give me yours. I love eggnog. I love eggnog so much. And my little winter snowman cup. All right, well, that has been my winter themed book tag video. Uh, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of my picks, anything that you would have picked, um, and we'll chat about it in the comments. Leave a like and uh, subscribe to my channel. Thanks. Happy winter.